Major support for a Louisiana French Renaissance is provided by DiMaggio, Wright, Roy, and Edwards, focusing on personal injury law and helping the people of Louisiana for over 50 years. As part of this philosophy, the firm is proud to enrich communities by supporting this program and LPB. And by Anderson, Dozier, Blanda, and Salsman of Lafayette, preserving the lives and livelihood of our clients with more than 90 years of combined plaintiff personal injury experience and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. My parents were part of that last generation where their parents didn't speak French to them and they wanted the continuation of that language that had been passed down for generations by the Acadians. So they enrolled myself and my older sister and my younger brother, all three of us in French immersion. When I was very little, probably about three or four, um, my mom would take me to, to Veille at like all of our old aunts and uncles' houses. I would go and visit with her and we'd drink our coffee and you know, that little thing and then she'd, she'd put me up on a the coffee table, and she taught me a bunch of little songs to sing, like Sot Crapo and J'ai passé de ta part and Allons à Lafayette. And I didn't really know the language then, but I, you know, I could, I could sing, I could sing them. And so that was probably the first time I was, I started doing things in French. So I decided to learn a song that I had heard that Zachary Richard wrote. I learned that song and s slowly started trying to learn more songs in French and found that it was really difficult to s remember words that I had no idea what they meant. You know, they were just sounds in my head. And so I really started trying to learn French. Without the music, I wouldn't have learned French. It's a language, a culture, a way of life that reminds us of the past. Once forbidden in schools and discouraged, Louisiana's French language and culture have staged a comeback, and today we're witnessing a Louisiana French Renaissance. Possession du territoire de la Louisiane. In April of 1682, near the present-day city of New Orleans, the French explorer La Salle arrived and claimed for France all the lands on the North American continent drained by the Mississippi River. In honor of his king, Louis XIV, La Salle named this enormous territory La Louisiane, the land of Louis. The task of following up on La Salle's claim would fall on the shoulders of two brothers, Pierre Lemoyne sur de Beville and his brother Jean Baptiste Lemoyne sur de Bienville. These two Canadian born French officers would establish the colony of Louisiana in 1699 and in 1718 its capital city of New Orleans. Four years earlier in 1714, an officer under their command, Louis Gichereau de Saint Denis, journeyed up the Red River and established the first permanent settlement in what is now the state of Louisiana. He named it for the tribe of Indians in the area, Natchitoches. The colony of Louisiana would remain a small backwater outpost until the middle of the 18th century. An event taking place almost 2,000 miles away in another small French colony called Acadie would forever change the face of Louisiana and reinforce the French character of the colony. This was Le Grand Derangement, 
the invasion of Acadie by the British forces and New England militia, with the goal of seizing the land and the ethnic cleansing of its inhabitants, the Acadians. Scattered to the winds and exiled from their homeland, over 3,000 of these French-speaking exiles founded a new Acadia in Louisiana. And as the 18th century gave way to the 19th, several thousand more French speakers would find a home in Louisiana. These were the inhabitants of the French Caribbean colony of Saint-Domingue, where a successful slave revolt overthrew French authorities and established the Republic of Haiti. Most of those unable or unwilling to live in the new republic escaped to Louisiana. As descendants of all of these French-speaking pioneers, the people of Louisiana have a pride in their ancestry and their French heritage language. The first Europeans who lived here were French, spoke French, wrote in French. The French were here a century before there was a United States of America. With the purchase of the Louisiana Territory in 1803 and statehood in 1812, Louisianans had to contend with the decline of its distinctively French culture and language. Eventually, the overwhelming Anglo-Saxon population, English-speaking population, moving west, it was inevitable that uh, the size of the, of the country would, would have an impact on Louisiana, the size of the population, the size of the English-speaking population. The French language persisted into the 20th century among Cajuns and Creoles, largely out of neglect, because the educated elite in New Orleans and the Plantation Belt, who first spoke French originally, had made the transition with the Civil War. They saw the writing on the wall and saw that the language of the future was English. It wasn't until the beginning of the 20th century that a systematic efforts began to be made to haul the rest of those French-speaking people into the system, eliminating French language from schools, rewriting the Constitution in 1921, and then a whole series of coincidental things happened. It was a matter of economic necessity. We had the big flood of 27, which brought in a lot of federal aid, all of it in English. The oil boom, the oil industry came in via Texas, Oklahoma, uh, with uh, entrepreneurs who were all English speaking. And if our people wanted to work in that industry, they had to be able to speak English and read and write in English. And so it was just that issue, this gradual Americanization of, of our country and of our state. You know, we could have preserved French language and culture in addition to, of course, nobody would have argued, nobody in his right mind would have argued against learning English. That wasn't the bad idea. The bad idea was getting rid of French. And, and there was this notion that the only way to insert English into the system was to get rid of what was there before. That there's this, all these you know, subtle and not so subtle pressures coming to bear on the French language in Louisiana. And in the 20th century, by the end of World War II, the slide was pretty well determined. My father, who had gone into the army, came back and f called himself for the first time in America. He said in, in French, J'ai parti un Cajun, j'ai revenu un Américain. I left to fight for my country as a Cajun. I've returned as an American. It's hard to uh, overestimate the importance that World War II had on the language. If you lose a language, you're gonna lose the keys that have brought about that language over the many generations. The fact that the French language and the expression in French of the culture, the stories and songs, the fact that those persisted through the 20th century into the very early 21st century is astonishing. It's astonishing. And it persisted in spite of very systematic efforts to eradicate it. In the 1960s, efforts changing Louisiana's linguistic story began taking root. Former U.S. Congressman and French-speaking Cajun activist James Jimmy DeMongeau's passion and pride in his French heritage language and culture led to a movement supporting and developing Louisiana's Francophone communities. He missed public life a lot, and he found in that code of field 
challenge a way to get back in public life, very different from what he did prior to that, but still very public. And he was able to work with Governor McKitton and the state legislator to create Codofil as a state agency. Granted people like Judge Alan Babino and uh, Dean uh, Thomas Arsenault did a lot prior to James DeMarzo to create a, uh, again an awareness for the French language, French Acadian language and culture. Back then it was their focus. But James DeMarzo was the one who really went to the legislature and started Codofil, which is an amazing thing in itself. I saw for myself that the French language, to be preserved, needed immediate attention. And then I tried to present this to Governor John McKithen. If it had not been for him, uh, this movement never would have started. He gave me absolute, complete, blinded support. And I give him credit for it, and uh, that's how it started. On the 20th of July, 1968, Governor John J. McKithen signed Act Number 409 into law establishing the Council for the Development of French in Louisiana, Codafil. It called for doing all things necessary to accomplish the development and preservation of the French language for the cultural and economic benefit of the state. My uncle had the political chutzpah, the financial means, and the political acumen to take on this movement, and that's what he did. And with the help of many, the movement began to take hold that was a, a magical moment. Just three years later, the 22 parish area designated as Acadiana was named as a special place. You would never have that happen today. They would call that anti-American. And then just uh, in 1974, three years after that, we get our own flag. Do you know how few places in America have their own flag? We do. And so you see this, this rushing toward this French Renaissance taking place in the 70s. And it was just an amazing thing. As president of Codafil, Jimmy DeMongeau encouraged a statewide effort reintroducing French education in public schools. He believed that Louisiana's heritage language needed saving, and the best methods were through education. In any movement, there are obstacles, objections, and discovery. Codafil's efforts were no different. The language was a struggle at first with uh, Mr. Le Mongeau. He felt that you could not build upon a, uh, an oral language to teach it in the schools. He felt that any French that would be taught in the school had to be uh, uh, standard French or international French because it was written, it was structured, it had a grammar. Starting in 1969, Codafil recruited teachers from France, Canada, and Belgium. By 1974, roughly 200 Louisiana schools featured French classes sponsored by Codafil. He put literally well over a million dollars of his own money into this movement. It was going to take that. His ideals were to try to get the French language back in the classroom. And he did it with, with methods that were not always orthodox. He brought teachers in from Belgium and Quebec province, and they came here. He went to George Pompidou, the president of France, and Pompidou said, Dimaggio, we will help you. In French, he said that, je vous aide. And he did. France was very instrumental in getting some of the financial backing and, and laying the groundwork for what the goals and the mission was of Codafil. Some people, including me, have said for a long time that uh, initially Codafil's operation was backwards. Instead of figuring out what we have and developing on that, right, they were Im importing textbooks from outside and teaching that. We talk about preserving 
supposedly preserving French in Louisiana. Well, you preserve what you already have. But what was happening, at least in the early going, was not preserving, but replacing. I think that some of the more controversial sides of uh, Jimmy DiMaggio's rhetoric might have even helped to save the local French, because if people had not gotten sort of angry about some of the things that DiMaggio was saying at the time about his, his sort of strong um, insistence that the French being taught be Parisian, if you will, will or standard French, um, and if there had not been a reaction to that, um, we might not even be talking about any French at all in Louisiana. So people, it, he riled people up. The attitude that he had at that time was reflective of an attitude that was in academic circles all over the country. He got things started in the early years with the idea of exchanges, of sending young people uh, from Louisiana to France and then having young people from France coming to Louisiana. When I came in 77, my first year, that was really the one that was the most eye-opening for me. The French government chartered a plane for us. We were a full plane of French teachers. And that was the second or third year where they were very much decided that this was it. Only teachers could go. With my group, and I think the group before that, you had to be a teacher. So we got here and the last day of our pre-service uh, training in Baton Rouge, uh, they asked us where we wanted to go. And we were a group of girls that had already started being friends. So we were looking for a district where we could all go together. And Iberia Parish was looking for 36 teachers. Every single elementary school had at least one French teacher. Some people would tell us, you know, this is a losing battle. In 30 years, nobody will speak French in Louisiana anymore. Things like that. But we didn't have the resistance that some teachers had. I think in the more rural parishes where French was very much still alive in the homes, there was a lot of resentment because it wasn't the same French and all that. But in New Iberia, which was a little city, French was already not that much present anymore. I think out of all my students, and I taught eight or nine classes a day, so that's 180 kids about, I might have two or three that spoke French at home. That was it. The first thing we, we all needed to do was to figure out exactly what is it that we have and how do we use that to preserve it and build on it. it we eventually got around to it. We eventually did the whole thing. We, over the years, captured the stories and songs through recordings and transcribed them and started turning them into written form, written literature. Uh, all of that happened, all of that happened, but it was, it was chaotic. It took a while to people like Amanda Lafleur, Barry Onsley, and the young pioneers of the time to convince him that uh, the Louisiana French was not bad French. It had to be showcased. We had to value it to its uh, correct level, linguistic and cultural level. Tiens, je te présente ici Evangeline. C'est la grande héroïne des Cajuns. Tiens, bonjour ça Margaret. Ça va bien mon ami Oui, comment ça va Oh, tout va bien. Tout va bien Je te présente Ariel ici, qui vient de la France. Oui. It took a while, I would say it took almost 10 years, but uh, it changed when uh, we started the Acadian Music Festival, which is called today Festival Acadien Creole. Before that, there were no festivals. Cajun musicians performed in houses. And 
it was Coderfield, through the music, established in 1974, the first tribute to Cajun music at Blackham Coliseum, which held 9,000 people and 12,000 people showed up in a rainstorm. And that was a turning point in the pride, the public manifestation of pride. Coderfield sponsored that event. That created the first Festival Acadien. Today, we've added the Creoles to it. In 1987, Festival International de la Louisiane was created. Again, francophone-based, largest in the country, free to the people, everybody come celebrate. Somebody had told me in 1974, when I first got hauled into this, when we did the first concert that ended up becoming Festival Zacardien and Creole. Somebody told me in 2017 that this was going to be happening. I, I, I mean, in my wildest dreams, I, I wouldn't have thought that. I think that this is such a core group of Louisiana people trying to maintain the French language preserve the traditional music, which, you know, this place has every kind of Cajun music, which is really great. And they encourage all the younger people to speak French on the stage. And I think that, you know, any encouragement to keep the richness of this culture going is a good thing. Because I love to be able to express the real music we do and not have to, you know, to the actual French speaking people here and the people whose culture it is. We actually get to play for our people here in Louisiana. I think that Codafil has worked very hard on making people aware that French was disappearing. And I think they've also worked very hard on getting the Cajuns to learn the written French, the spelling of the words, just the basic move toward preserving the language, you know. And if you speak two languages, as Belton Richard said, you know, you gotta be double smart. Well, hello, or I should say bonsoir. Welcome to the LPB studios this evening. I'm Beth Courtney, president of LPB, and you're watching a Louisiana French Renaissance. This production commemorates the 50th anniversary of Codafil, the Council for the Development of French in Louisiana. You won't hear that on other public television stations. You know, we hear from you, our viewers, that the programs you love most are those that showcase the people, history, and culture of our state. And this evening, if you're a Cajun, or I don't know, Cajun want to be, like I really am, I invite you to help us produce more programs like this. Your membership contribution makes this possible. Come, become a member of LPB by simply calling the numbers on your screen, 888-769-5000, or pledge online at lpb.org. And if you're already a member, please consider an additional one-time donation. We have so many wonderful thank you gifts, especially selected for your pledge of support during this broadcast. And I know that you want us to hear from you out there if you're proud of your heritage, if you love being a part of all of this we're showing you this evening, we need to hear from you. And Clay Fourier has uh, some details about our thank you gifts. Clay. 
I sure do, Beth, and we want to hear from all of you out there. It's a wonderful night of French programming, celebrating the French culture, heritage, and language. And right now, if you call us at 888-769-5000 or go online to lpb.org, we have some very special thank you gifts. Let's go over them. For your $180 pledge, if you do the math, that's only $15 a month, you receive a Louisiana French Renaissance. That's a DVD of the program that you're seeing right here tonight. The Queen's Proclamation. Let me explain to you what that is. That was a Warren Perrin petitioned the government of Great Britain to issue an apology to the Acadian people for the deportation. And that was settled in a decree on July 28th for the annual day of, com of commemoration of the Acadian deportation. It's in English on one side and French on the other. You'll also get Arrête par la musique, Portraits of South Louisiana book. Now, for your $120 pledge, or only $10 a month, you'll receive the Portraits of South Louisiana book. $84, or only $7 a month, you'll receive the Queen's Proclamation. $60, or only $5 a month, you'll receive the DVD of the program you're watching here tonight. And you'll also get access to Passport with a lot of other local French content. Now, I also wanted to mention something very special, and that's for the highest credit card pledge. For a contribution of $750 or more, $750 or more, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover, you're going to receive two Bonton passes to Festival International de Louisiane in downtown Lafayette. That's from April 25th to April 29th, the largest international music festival in the United States. Your VIP ticket will give you access to the festival pass zones, along with front row viewing, their stage access, express beverage lines, and access to private restrooms as well. You'll also enjoy the music of the Lost by Ramblers, Marshall Ball, Mark Broussard, Terrence Simmons, and so many, many more. So won't you call us right now on this very special evening where we're celebrating our French heritage and culture. Call us at 888-769-5000 or go online to lpb.org. Back to Beth. Uh, bonsoir, and I am here with uh, Dr. William Arsenault. Bill, you, uh, you'll you correct my French if I say anything incorrectly. You are, you won't. <laughs> you're president of the Codafil board. I called you chairman of the board, but you're actually in France. It's a president, right? And Monsieur le Président. Monsieur yeah. le Président. Well, isn't this a great night? And lovely, lovely. can we believe that we're celebrating 50 years? Can you believe that? It's hard to believe. Uh, 50 years ago, 1968, Jimmy DiMaggio had an idea and a dream, and, and look where we are today. What's a wonderful and what, thing. what has happened over those 50 years is absolutely incredible. Yeah. It really is. And we have so many friends out there, and a number of them got together, right? For a challenge. Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> May we? <laughs> uh, we have uh, some friends, James Kim, Shelley Lockhart, Hillman Popillon, Marianne and Earl Richard, Sarah Ross, all uh, South Louisiana folks, but we'll take pledges from North Louisiana too. Uh, they are support, they're very proud to support this programming tonight, and they have, uh, will match the first $1,500, the first $1,500 that you pledge will be matched by them up to $1,500. So now's the time to make your pledge. If you give $50, we'll get $100. So hit the telephones. Let's go. Absolutely. And um, you and I just went this week over to Lafayette to see a wonderful uh, Zachary Richard film in French. And it just made me so proud to understand what a wonderful movement this is in the state of Louisiana. People from all walks of life are uh, involved in it. And it makes it very special to be in this state. Well, la Louisiana est différent. Ici, on parle français. Louisiana is different. We speak French here. Uh, and, you know, it, it has brought Louisiana into the international French community. There's a huge world of Francophone countries all over the globe. And we're part of that. And we participate in, in all of these movements that, that exist. Of course, I do remember that there was some controversy when we were first producing programs here at LPB about should we do Cajun French or Parisian French, you remember that controversy? We talk about it in the documentary. Well, it's really standard French as opposed to Cajun French, but Cajun French is a very good quality, very good level of French. I never met a, I spoke Cajun French before I spoke standard French, but I never met a Frenchman who didn't understand a Cajun, and I never met a Cajun who didn't understand a Frenchman. <laughs> and listen, the key here is that French, <laughs> at whatever level, whatever dialogue, uh, whatever dialect, 
Let's talk French. That's the well, key. Well, it's a great night. We're going to go back to the documentary in just a moment. But right now, we're going to go back over to Clay, who's going to share with us some more about those wonderful thank you gifts. Clay. Oh, absolutely, Beth. We want to thank all of you who have called in. I know there's so many of you out there that want to share your French heritage with everyone, and you can do it here tonight. We're presenting this special program and another full hour of programming highlighting what LPB has done with regards to the French culture. Call us right now at 888-769-5000. Use Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and Discover, or ask about that sustaining membership. We've got some special gifts for you. For your $180 pledge, if you do the math, it's only $15 a month, you'll receive a French Renaissance uh, DVD. That's the program you're seeing here tonight. You'll also receive the Queen's Pro Proclamation. Again, that was a royal proclamation decreeing July 28th as the annual day of commemoration for the Acadian deportation. You'll also get Arrête, I know I'll get this, Arrête Pala Musique, that's Portraits of South Louisiana, a beautiful book. $120 is all it takes to get that Portraits of South Louisiana book. $84 and you'll receive the Queen's Proclamation. $60, only $5 a month, a DVD of the program that you're watching here tonight, along with access to Passport and so much more. Let's go back on over to Beth and Bill. So Bill, one of the thank you gifts is Arrête Pala Musique. That means what? Don't stop the music. What a great title. Don't Indeed. stop the music. <laughs> and, and the portraits of South Louisiana. These uh, were selected by uh, the people involved in producing this documentary, and they thought they would be a wonderful accompaniment uh, to this documentary. And, you know, it would be great to have for your children, your grandchildren. What a wonderful treasure to have a copy of that proclamation from Queen Elizabeth. They don't exactly say, I'm sorry, but they acknowledge the um, terrible... Um, injustice that was really done. Yes, and we have thank, we have Warren Perrin to thank for that. He initiated this uh, this lawsuit. It took him 15 years, but we got an apology from the Queen for the expulsion of the Acadians in the Grand Dérangement, the Great Upheaval. One of the things we want to do is to share our history with others, and we hope this evening you're enjoying it. We'll be back. Give us a call. Two children played on a dusty road Barefoot running in the yard. In the years to come, young people starting to play the music, and Monsieur de Mangeau then realized how the Louisiana French was important because the music, the Louisiana French through the music, is really what made the difference, at least at the beginning. And so he accepted more and more that we teach, the teachers coming from other countries, mostly Belgium, France, and Canada, how to use Louisiana French words and expressions in what they taught. I was named, I was like the first Louisianian to be director of Codefil. And so it was um, someone who was born here, someone who was a French speaker and a Cajun. So a lot of what um, the goal was to involve Cajuns, to get the Cajuns to be very proud about the French that they speak, to there was complaint from Cajuns and some apathy because they felt that Codefil was reaching out to France. After all, many of the teachers were from France or from Belgium. And there was the mistaken idea that it was really an association that was uh, focusing on the French. And we really had to convince Cajuns that Codefil was created for them in order to save their language, you know, to save the French that's here. We wanted especially for Cajuns to learn how to read what they could say. Cajuns know a lot of French. They just haven't always been very confident about uh, speaking. It's toujours 
intéressé, curieux de savoir s'il pouvait se faire comprendre ou non. Il était très fier quand, les, quand il parlait avec un Français ou un Belge ou un Canadien puis que les gens les comprenaient. Il était très fier. Parce qu'il disait, bon, ben, c'est vrai qu'on parle français alors. Cajun cultural activist, educator and Gaydon native, Richard Guidry earned a master's degree in French education and taught French in St. Martin Parish schools before working for the Louisiana Department of Education, a role that ultimately led the way for Louisiana French-speaking teachers to incorporate Louisiana French in the classroom. I think with the hiring of Richard Guidry in a position, a supervisor of a French education with the State Department of Education, we see a turning point because Richard was one of those people who said, Yes, we can use both standard French and our own spoken French in the classroom to an eventual goal which enriches and enhances both of those. Richard was the most passionate person I've ever met, especially when it comes to the culture, the language, and the persistence of Louisiana French in Louisiana and in the world, and the place of Louisiana French in the world. And he really gave me that passion, that the sense that this was so important, that you had to fight for it. Inspired by Montreal's French Immersion Schools for Immigrants, Codafil created French immersion programs in the 80s, starting with East Baton Rouge Parish in 1981, and continuing with Calcasieu Parish in 1983. It turns out they actually were effective, not only in terms of producing young people who were capable of not only speaking French, but expressing what they had to say in French about anything, you know, about business or, or politics or culture or anything else. If we were going to sustain this movement, we needed to have our native Louisiana people in the classrooms teaching French and French immersion. Named after a squadron of 200 American pilots who flew for the French during World War I, a Louisiana program emerged. I started thinking about the Escadrille Lafayette and had an idea maybe we could have a similar program for teachers. And I hit upon the idea of having the Escadrille Louisiane, uh, a way to recruit teachers uh, to go to France and become immersed in the French culture and then come back and become teachers. I approached the French government. They liked the idea. They uh, go for a year and France pays them a generous uh, living allowance. They take courses at the university there where they're, they're working uh, part-time for France, where they teach conversational English 12 hours a week to earn their keep. They get a very generous stipend from the French government, and uh, they return to Louisiana, and they have signed a contract with Codafield to come back and be French teachers. Donc, pourquoi est-ce que tu penses que c'est un droit? Tu dois le faire. And so the idea is you go there, you have to survive, and you do that as a worker, as a student, as a person living in the country. And I loved it. I loved getting to study more. I liked the idea of immersion, um, getting to teach con uh, language through a content, so teaching through math, through science, through history. I was really inspired by their teaching methods, and so that's how I learned how to really teach in the content. Il voyage beaucoup ou elle un jour peut-être c'est elle ou il qui voyage beaucoup. OK Oui. Donc ça va Vous voulez faire le poster Oui, oui. Vas-y, c'est cela. I'm reminded every day of how incredible it is that I teach in a language that my grandfather was beaten for speaking. Um, and that's incredible to me. I think it's the French Immersion Program, which was sponsored by Codafil, is really the key to this renaissance, if you will, of French language and French speakers in the state. Since the 1970s, some 70 teachers from Francophone countries have come to our state each year as part of the Codafil programs. And today, there are approximately 300 or more French teachers in Louisiana, 
and of those, 175 are Louisianans. 25 are Escadrille participants. We have 32 programs in 11 parishes right now that have a French immersion program. And today we have close to 5,000 students in these programs. The programs vary, but uh, they can have from 60 to 80 percent of the day in French. The children are taught mathematics in French. They are taught science in French. They are taught social studies in French. And they have their English language arts on the side. And by the time they're probably 10 or 11 years old, they are functionally bilingual. Ça c'est pourquoi le troisième amendement est le plus important de et c'est à propos de l'esclavage. Au revoir. I started teaching in immersion in 92. We have former immersion kids who want to have their children in it. It's a good way to uh, give a natural way of speaking to the children that they're going to keep out throughout their lives. It's so different from learning a second language. It's not the same thing. Learning a second language in school, you're learning about the language, and then you learn a little bit the language itself. In immersion, you learn through the language. You gotta establish an authentic need in the student. That child gotta realize in order for him or her to succeed, academically and socially, in the classroom, got to learn the language. When I hear from a principal of a brand new program at Mamou Elementary High School who tells me of a parent who calls the principal and says they're so excited because their child is coming home speaking in French to a, a, a grandparent who sees in this child himself or herself when they were that age and were told not to speak French anymore. No French, no more, as they say. It's just, um, it, it's a very profound experience, very profound. So Cotofield had everything to do with that. Where we are now is probably not so bad, considering it could be better, it could always be better. There ought to be 10 times, 20 times, the immersion programs. And the immersion programs that do exist ought to be bigger. I mean, there's a waiting line, there's a waiting list to get into the, some of the immersion programs in Lafayette. What does that tell you? That tells you that they need to have, they need to have more classes, more, you know, more teachers. It works, we know it works. It's the only thing that works. We've had close to 30,000 students go through French immersion. And when you ask the question, how many of them are actually making a living or you know, adding value to their, their careers with this French, probably the answer is very few. So what we're saying right now is, uh, why not create the infrastructure to allow them to be able to have a leg up on the competition because of their French? It's time to say, look, these children, it's beautiful, they're cute, you know, they speak French, isn't that wonderful? But they're all dressed up and no place to go. We want to give them somewhere to go. I think Cotofield's message today is let's connect those dots. Let's complete the articulation. Let's invite our children, not only to come to the table, but to stay at the table with us and contribute to the general wheel of Louisiana's good fortune. I think that the, you know, again, the struggle continues, but success has been realized. And I think that, you know, as time goes on, this new generation of French speakers that have been through, you know, French immersion and, and a new sense of pride in their uh, language and culture could only bring positive traction for us. The greatest realization of Coderfield, the greatest achievement of Coderfield, was the transformation in the mind of the people a transformation of the society of South Louisiana. And now we have to make sure that the Louisiana people themselves stay very attached to their language and culture. <laughs> Thank you.
Je crois qu'un homme a pu faire les choses qu'il devrait faire, qu'il croit euh, qu'il va, qu va faire sa vie meilleure et qu'il va faire la vie de les autres meilleure. Mais euh, j'espère que la langue pouvait euh, euh, continuer dans la Louisiane. Mais euh, on doit, on doit, il faut avoir quelque chose à faire. On faut, on faut créer en français. Oui, créer. Ça c'est. Ça, c'est quelque chose qui est vraiment difficile pour moi de créer en français parce que, comme Zach a dit, il faut avoir des choses de faire en français. Et c'est pas possible tout le temps, c'est un peu forcé des fois. Et, um, Mais quand tu es autour le, le propre monde, ça peut arriver. Oui, parce oui. Parce qu'il Oui, c'est est vrai. Oui. Parce que des fois, moi je m'attrape, je connais pas pourquoi, mais. Quand je, quand, je, quand je rêve, tous les temps en temps, c'est en français. Mmh, et ça me surprend. Mmh. Parce que je suis pas, j'expecte je, pas ça. Oui. Mmh. Mmh. But... Quand j'étais à Sainte-Anne, c'était comme ça. J'ai commencé à rêver en français. Oui. Mmh. Yeah. C'était intéressant. C'est un peu drôle, le, mmh. les premières fois que ça arrive. Mais tu t'habitues à ça. Et, et c'est... Mmh. C'est plus fun de <rire> juste rêver en, en anglais. Oui. Major support for a Louisiana French Renaissance is provided by DiMaggio, Wright, Roy, and Edwards, focusing on personal injury law and helping the people of Louisiana for over 50 years. As part of this philosophy, the firm is proud to enrich communities by supporting this program and LPB. And by Anderson, Dozier, Blanda, and Salsman of Lafayette, preserving the lives and livelihood of our clients with more than 90 years of combined plaintiff personal injury experience and by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and viewers like you. Hello and welcome back to LPB Studios this evening. I'm Beth Courtney, president of LPB. You've just watched the Louisiana French Renaissance commemorating the 50th anniversary of Codafil, the Council for the Development of French in Louisiana. And if you love watching programs that tell the story of the people of Louisiana, Please help us produce more documentaries, such as this one, with your pledge of support today. During this brief intermission, we invite you to become a member of LPB by making either your annual pledge of support or by becoming a sustaining member with a monthly donation in an amount of your choosing. All you have to do is call us at 888-769-5000 or go online at lpb.org. And let me tell you, do not turn away because we have some more great French programming coming up. If you like this whole idea of looking back 50 years, 
we're going to look at some wonderful highlights of programs we've done through the years at LPB, and you don't want to miss it. Clay Fourier has some details about our great thank you gifts tonight. Clay. Thanks, Beth. If you call right now, you can use Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, or you can ask them about the Sustaining Membership Program at 888-769-5000. We have some wonderful gifts to help you celebrate the French heritage and culture that we are celebrating here tonight. Your $180 pledge, which is only $15 a month, you'll receive a Louisiana French Renaissance, a DVD of the program that you're seeing here tonight, the Queen's Proclamation, which of course proclaimed that the 28th of July would be the annual day of commemoration for the Acadian deportation. You'll also get the Portraits of South Louisiana book. All that for you. Now for $120, or only $10 a month, you'll receive that, that book, The Portraits of South Louisiana. $84, you'll receive the Queen's Proclamation. $60, you'll receive the DVD of the program you're seeing here tonight, plus access to Passport with so many more programs. And I've got a very special credit card pledge for a con contribution of $750 or more. You're going to receive two bon ton passes to the Festival International de Louisiane in downtown Lafayette on April 25th to 29th. It's the largest international music festival in the United States. Now, your VIP tickets will include access to the Festival Pass Zones, along with the front row viewing. There's going to be stage access and express beverage lines, access to private restrooms. You'll also enjoy L Lost Bayou Ramblers and Marsha Ball and Mark Broussard and so many more. It's all there if you call us right now that you see on your screen. Listen, I wanted to thank Kathleen Beerp of Karen Crow for that great contribution. Thank you very much. And Daniel Blanchard of Baton Rouge, thank you for your contribution. Now let's head on back over the bath. Well, I am here with two guests, uh, a, a new guest joining Bill Arsenault, and that would be uh, uh, Amanda LaFleur, now Jambroni. Is that correct? Oh, good. Correct. Well, we are so happy to have you all here. And Amanda, we've seen you in this documentary, both of you, in younger days, yes. <laughs> as we talk about. <laughs> uh, it, you uh, are involved in the celebration yes, uh, of the 50th anniversary. What, what are you all looking forward to? Well, we've got any number of events that are going to take place throughout the whole year. Um, but we're also doing some public relations activities, number, uh, numbered among them are some public service announcements that feature people from throughout the state. And uh, it's kind of exciting because we, our, our theme is une place à la table, a place at the table. We want people to understand we sort of have come full circle. In the old days, my grandmother didn't call herself Cajun, she was just French. Mm -hmm. And uh, now when we talk about French in Louisiana, we have to remember that it's not just Cajuns, it's Creoles, it's the Homa Nation, it's young people whose parents may be from Pittsburgh or uh, uh -huh. San Francisco who have me moved here and put their kids in French immersion too. And all of those people are part of the Francophone family, the French family of South Louisiana. And so those PSAs reflect that. Well, tonight, I think we're going to learn a little French because we're going to play a couple of them. Oh, we're going terrific. to learn a few words. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, Bill, we want to hear from, from people across the state. We talked about uh, the Escadrille. That's at Centenary College as well, isn't it? In Shreveport, it is, it Louisiana. Is. That's where the education base of, of uh, Escadrille, Louisiana is. And so let's get some people from Shreveport to call. Uh, Centenary College, by the way, is the only college in America that has a university press that publishes books only in French. I didn't know that. That's, That's very right. interesting. That's right. Centenary College here in Louisiana, huh. in Shreveport. Well, only right. in French. Two of our Terrific. strongest bases of support for the Fran French language in Louisiana are right there at Centenary. Well, that's wonderful. You know, I, I remember, you, we, we look at a time when we look back in the history where people said they were, you know, had to, were beaten or whatever, or mm -hmm. snapped on the hand if they spoke French in school. And now, doesn't everyone want to be Cajun? It seems like it's cool <laughs> to be Cajun. You know, you know uh, have you ever been to a city in America and in some place in the world and go into a restaurant that they did not have something fixed Cajun? Yes. Well, this Cajun is true. on the menu. There are even restaurants named Absolutely. Cajun restaurants. Well, had it not been for Codafield, Perhaps. That would not exist. I can tell you. The Cajuns would still be here, <laughs> but a restaurant in San Francisco would, called a Cajun restaurant would not have existed. It is Codafield that made all of this happen. Well, right now, we're all going to be a little bit of it. We're going to roll in one of those PSAs, so we're going to learn how to say, I think, uh, quelque chose. Let's take a look at one mm -hmm. of those PSAs. Quelque chose. Mm -hmm. 
Écoute, j'ai quelque chose à te dire. Well, that's great. Now, if we watch yeah. enough of those, we're going to learn some that's more. That's the idea. But what we need to do this evening, we need to hear from a lot of you out there. We hope you're watching with us, and uh, we have some great thank you gifts. Clay, tell us about those. All right, folks, for your $180 pledge, only $15 a month on Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover, or through the Sustaining Membership Program, you'll receive a Louisiana French Renaissance DVD, the program that you've just seen here tonight, the Queen's Proclamation, the Portraits of South Louisiana book that can all be yours. $120, only $10 a month, you'll receive that Portraits of South Louisiana book, $84, only $7 a month, the Queen's Proclamation can be yours, it's English on one side, French on the other, $60, $5 a month, a DVD of the program that you've seen here, plus access to LPB's passport with local content of all of those French programs that we've been talking about. Now, for a contribution of $750 or more, you'll receive two bon temps passes to Festival International de Louisiane in downtown Lafayette from April 25th to April 29th. It's the largest international music festival in the United States. Now, your VIP ticket will give you access to Festival Pass Zones along with front row viewing. You're going to get stage access, express beverage lines, and access to private restrooms. You're also going to be able to hear Lost by Ramblers, Marshall Ball, Mark Broussard, so many any more, why don't you call us right now at 888-769-5000. Go online to lpb.org. Make that pledge of support. Hey folks, I want to also thank Robert Lafayette of Baton Rouge, Louisiana for making that pledge of support. And I also want to thank, of course, uh, the friends of LPB, phone volunteers and camera operators, along with Logan's Farm and Ambrosia Bakery, Baton Rouge Coca-Cola for all of those great foods over there. Our member challenge, James Kim, uh, Shelley Lockhart, Hillman Poplion, uh, Marianne and Earl Richard and Sarah Ross, thank you all for calling in. If you haven't called in yet, right now's the time, 888-769-5000. Back on over to Beth, Bill and Amanda. So as we were watching this program, you saw some of your students, right? Yes, you recognized sure a lot of faces out there. And, and anyone who's ever taken a French class, uh, all of the parents who are involved in the immersion programs, we need to hear from you. And you've mm -hmm. expanded the immersion programs as well, haven't you? Yes, we have uh, 14 programs. No, we have no, we have 40 programs in 12 parishes. Well, wouldn't it be wonderful if they were all across the state? That would be it fabulous. Is. That's we'd the love idea. To, we, is that that's, that's <laughs> that right. is that's the right. idea. We we'd love to have one in North Louisiana in Lincoln Parish. <laughs> <laughs> if you hear me, hint, hint. let's call. Hint, 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 hint. <laughs> well, it, uh, and, and I know you said your mother's watching us tonight. So, Absolutely. so did you all? Did you speak French growing up in your home? You know, I, I, I guess I'm a good, I'm the, I'm the anti-immersion example, and because uh, oftentimes my students will say, well, madame, I'll never learn to speak like you because I didn't grow up speaking French. And, well, and then I can tell them, no, neither did I. I grew up hearing it. Uh, but it wasn't really until I was put in an immersion situation um, in university that, uh, that I learned to speak it fluently and then was able to come back and, and speak with my grandmother. So there are lots of ways to get there. Well, and we saw in the documentary, and we're going to see as we go into the next programs that are coming up, mm -hmm. that music sometimes is the way, you know, and certainly the Festival International, uh, the uh, Festivals Acadian, uh, has drawn a lot of people around the world to this as well. But I have to give you the results. We did indeed meet that member challenge, 1,540 uh, for the challenge. And uh, we need to hear from you right now, though. Uh, we're not, we're, we were a little quiet in the studio and I was promising everyone that I know people who love Codafil, love the French language, love the music, love the food, are going to call. We need to hear from you right now and we have great volunteers here, terrific thank you gifts. And let's look at one more PSA. Um, I think this one may teach us a word I'm not sure I want to be talking about anymore. <laughs> no, that's actually v. It's the verb. It's a verb form v of the verb vouloir, to want. Oh, to want. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm, you see, we all need to learn it together. I'm, and this uh, is something that we will want to do and it fits in thematically with all these festivals. Perfect. So let's look at that right now. Tu veux danser? Uh, that's great. Uh, you know, the rest of the night, we're going to have some excerpts of dancing, history. 40 years we've been producing programs. Let's take a look right now. <laughs> 